Lisa Sky Boutique and today I am going to show you how to do the sublimation hack using DTF powder and DTF film. Today we're going to be using the Four Artisans DTF film. I think this is size A3. It's about 11 by 16, somewhere right around in there. The reason I love this film is that it's two-sided, so you don't have to worry about choosing the correct side. It doesn't have a shiny side and a matte side. Either side is going to work just fine. And then we are going to use DTF powder, which I have, oh, sorry right here. This is the DTF powder that I use and I will have links for both of these down uh, below in the description. Uh, these are both going to be available in my Amazon store, uh, in my storefront. And we are going to be curing this DTF powder today using an electric griddle. Remember the electric griddles that I don't know if you've had one, probably your grandparents had one that they would make pancakes on or breakfast usually. Um, that's what I always remember them for. Uh, it cures the powder on the uh, DTF film perfectly and quickly, like within 30 seconds. So let's get started. I'm going to print my image on the DTF film. I'm going to be using my sawgrass printer. I'm using sublimation ink. I'm going to mirror my image. I'm doing everything exactly as if I was doing regular sublimation, except I'm printing it on the film and I'm gonna get that done right now. Okay, so since this is basically sublimation, although we're going to be putting it on a cotton shirt, I have chosen an image that has very little white. Um, you know that sublimation does not print out white, so anywhere there would have been white, it would have been blank, and the, sh the color of the shirt is gonna show through. So I just took this off my sawgrass printer. I have taped a piece of paper under it so the sawgrass would take um, the transparency or take the film through it it wouldn't otherwise then I'm going to take my DTF powder and I'm just going to sprinkle it on and you can you don't have to you know be careful about this at all and then I'm just going to make sure that it gets all over the wet ink. You have to act pretty quickly because your ink has to be wet. And I'm making sure all of the inked places are covered with powder. And we're gonna dust that off. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove the paper from the film and this powder is reusable I will put this powder back in the container don't touch the powder yet we have not cured it we still need to cure the powder and I use painters tape so it comes off really easily now to cure the powder I am using a griddle and I'm going to move the camera so you can see this. Curing the powder just melts the powder into the film. And that makes it to where it will adhere to whatever type of fabric you are putting it on. I'm putting this, I put a piece of parchment down. I've got this griddle heated up to eight, uh, excuse me, 350 degrees. Then I'm going to set this on here. Uh, powder side up and you're going to start seeing the color change. You're going to see it start to darken and that's just letting you know that that powder is setting. It's melting into the film and after this does that you don't even have to use this um, uh, 
transparency immediately. You can stack it up and use it later. You can um, uh, sell it if, if you're going to sell it. Actually, though, you have to be careful about that. If it's an image that you created, then you can sell it. If it's an image that you downloaded, even if you have commercial use of that image, that just means you can put it on a garment. It doesn't mean that you can sell the image. And then you just do this until you see all of the powder. It turns into kind of a glossy look and you can see the color changing. And I see the, see the S is still powdery. Used to be we would hover our heat press platen over the image and that was just fraught with problems. You could touch your platen to the image and if you did that, then you would have to, you know, worry about trying to clean your platen off and so forth. But this goes much quicker. I mean, it's, it's just such an easy process. You are seeing this in actual real time. And I'm just going to make sure that we are getting contact. And I probably, you don't even have to use the, um, the parchment, I don't guess. Um, I just want to be sure I don't melt the film to the griddle. I got this griddle at Walmart. I think it was $23. It's totally worth it. I think we're about there. Everything looks melted and I am not seeing any more powder. Okay, now that everything is melted and ready to go, we are ready to go over to the heat press and press it on a garment. Now, since this is basically the same as sublimation, we're taking a little bit of a risk because I'm going to put this on this Heather Gray shirt. And so, um, and you know, it, sublimation always works best on a light colored shirt. Um, I'm just giving it a quick little pre-press to make sure I've got moisture out of the shirt. Um, now, we're not gonna press at the same heat that we would normally press for sublimation. And here you can see a close-up of the um, image. And you can touch it, nothing is coming off. Um, it's got a real, um, you can feel the image, but I mean, it is not going anywhere. It does not feel powdery at all. So we're gonna put this on. Like I said, I chose an image that basically has no white. And so um, we're gonna see how well it's gonna show up on this gray shirt. And this shirt is, this may be a blend, let's see. 90% cotton shirt, it's 90%. So we are going to see how it does. I'm gonna kind of fold it here. I'm gonna find center, cause I wanna be sure that it is centered. We'll put a cover sheet on it. My heat is set at 300, so it is a little bit lower heat setting, and my time is only set at 30 seconds instead of a normal 40 seconds. Normally when I do sublimation, I go at 40 seconds at 400 degrees. Um, I've got it on a medium pressure um, it's not, you know, a super hard pressure at all. You can see I'm set on four. Um, well, you can't see that, but I am set on a four. I'm using a Hotronics Auto Clam, and this is a cold peel. So once we take it off of the press, we are going to let that cool down, and then we'll peel it, and then we are going to give it one final press, so we'll see how everything turns out in just a second. Okay, we're about ready to peel this off. A reminder again, I am using the Four Artisans DTF film. This is a sublimation hack. Remember, this when you get this film, it says it's to be used in a DTF printer. I ran it through my Sawgrass printer with sublimation ink. I had attached it to a piece of paper so it would run through my printer just fine. Um, 
and a couple of other shirts that I've done. I did this shirt. I did it. Uh, I think I did this live on TikTok. If y'all don't follow me on TikTok, um, definitely follow me on TikTok at Under a Texas Sky. And then I did this shirt as well. Um, again, you can see both of those shirts, I avoided white. Now, if you're putting your image on a white shirt, then use any, any kind of an image that you want. It can have all the white in the world that you want on it. Um, this one, again, I avoided um, mostly white. So let's go ahead and peel this off and let's see how the image looks. It's got a little bit of resistance and that's okay. I think I could probably do it for 20 seconds and I probably would not have this resistance, but it's no big deal. It still came off okay. And, and I still think it looks great on the shirt. We're gonna give it one final press just to set it and then we'll come back and have a look at the final result. All right, y'all. So I gave it one last press. I pressed for 10 seconds on 300 degrees. I did cover it with a piece of parchment before I pressed it. And that just gives it one final press to set everything. These shirts wash beautifully. Um, you can wash them and dry them and they turn out just fine. Most of the time for mine, I wash and hang to dry, but I just had a shirt that I did several weeks ago, again on my TikTok, and um, I washed it. I wasn't even thinking. I threw it in the dryer when I took it out this morning. It looks absolutely amazing. Um, I love this. It is a great alternative. You can do this on any fabric, um, you know, it, if, if it's a polyester shirt and it's white, just do regular sublimation. There's no point in going through all of this trouble. But um, if you've got a bunch of cotton shirts laying around and you don't want to just do vinyl, you know, to cut vinyl and layer vinyl and all of that, why not go ahead and do the sublimation hack? It is so easy and it is awesome. Um, if you've got any questions, leave them. I always try to answer your questions. Um, you can shop for all of your sublimation supplies in the links in my bio. I've got a link tree and it goes to Heat Transfer Warehouse where you can buy equipment. You can buy all kinds of vinyl. My Amazon storefront has um, all kinds. It also has sublimation blanks, um, but it also has the artisan, um, the, four ar the four artisan um, Film. You can get there, the DTF powder, you can get all kinds of things there. Um, but if you're looking for an alternative and you want to be able to sublimate something on cotton, I recommend this. It is awesome and it really, it's kind of fun too. So um, thanks for joining me, y'all. If you've got questions, ask them. <laughs>